Eddie O'Loughlin. How are you, mate? <laughs> welcome, welcome to Electronic Music Life. I'm good. Thanks for having me, man, and welcome to my jungle. Yeah, thanks for letting us uh, do the, uh, the the today's episode here. It's um, an absolute pleasure to be here amongst uh, all this great gear. I um, yeah, I wanted to talk to you firstly today about uh, your listening party and and creating okay. and creating deliberate yeah. um, spaces to with with um, your mu- like with music and and being deliberate about um, listening to music. Um, so yeah, just tell us a little bit about the, 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 the listening party, like your gathering. I suppose it happened during the lockdown. I sort of started buying a lot of records again and really taking time to appreciate music rather than have it on as a background or have it in you know, headphones while you're going to the gym or whatever. And rather than being in the mindset of oh, I'm buying these records to DJ, just really appreciating music, buying amazing albums, plus, yeah. you know, free jazz, strange things, whatever. And then I started an Instagram account, really just not to annoy my friends talking about gear and records and plants. And it was just this little thing I started. And within that, I started to see all these posts about, you know, Japanese jazz kisses, you know, bars in Japan uh, for the last 70 years that are opened up because people didn't have the money to buy, have home audio equipment. So these bars have amazing setups and they'd go there to listen to records. And I thought it was such a beautiful thing and to pay homage to music, you know, and be deliberate. If you like music, make a space for it. So over the last couple of years, I've made this space, you know, my apartment. I don't have really any noise restrictions here um, and just set it up, nice vintage speakers. And then I got the idea to share that and do a monthly party. And you know, I had the pleasure of having you here and I do them, uh, trying to do them every month. And I get about five or six people. They each bring a few records. And it's a night where we get together, have wine, cheese, and just focus on the music. So proper geek, music geek night. Um, <laughs> And it's not too formal. It's not as though we put on a record and we all are silent. Uh, it's just for like like-minded music heads to share music and go down different rabbit holes. Yeah. And it's been so much fun and everyone that's come loves it. And it's a way for me to introduce people within the industry that I know, radio hosts, collectors, DJs, who may not know each other. So I sort of curate the people as well. And everyone that comes along exchanges each other's details. I see them doing things together, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's just this beautiful sort of um, sort of safe space to nerd out on music. Yeah. 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 yeah and um, you mentioned like uh, uh, this Japanese and, and I noticed I, you you told me about the speakers that you've got here as yeah. well in your space and they're Japanese as well. No, they're British. They're, they're British. Hanoi's, but they're very popular in Japan. Right. So, right. Yeah. So the Japanese pay homage to like American and British hi-fi. Like you'll see lots of, uh, Macintosh gear and JBL studio monitors, giant speakers. And in Japan, they're of the ethos of having big speakers in a small room and valve amplifiers. I've got a valve amplifier. And, um, you know, so I just started reading and meeting people and like-minded, you know, people that are into that through Instagram and just sort of doing research and ended up buying these amazing Tanoi Arden speakers that are older than me there from 1975. Um, I picked them up from Melbourne about a year ago. Mm, the, but, the the vintage hi-fi uh, account yeah. has like like amassed all these like music nerds from around the world, yeah, now, like, yeah. you know, from all sorts of places, yeah. and even even uh, you know quite respectful artists. Yeah. And, um, and you, you're engaging like like yeah. there's a lot of conversation happening about your setup and and geeking out with all that kind of stuff stuff as well. Absolutely, some of my heroes messaged me, you know, like Hank Shockley and, you know, Rich Medina's on there and Luke Una and, you know, all these people. Because it's just, there's nothing contrived about it. It's just for the love of music, you know, and having a nice space. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Now, the the um, the, the listening party um, was, would, that, would you say that kind of like earth, like during lockdown? Was yeah. that, so... Because I, I feel like there's something a bit more deeper in, in this, like with the, the whole, and I think there may be because of uh, the lockdowns and, and COVID, there's this sort of appreciation now and more understanding of that importance of uh, not so much just community, but mm. the, the exchange of being in an env- obviously with people yeah. um, and, and the, the benefits of discussing and, yeah. and being in, um, what's the, I guess, sort of regulating together and talking about stuff together. And, and so have you found that to be, I guess, therapeutic? 
as well as, you know, with amongst people, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's a social thing where, you know, I'm inviting people who love music and search for music and are excited by music they haven't heard yet and getting a room full of people that have brought records that they love um, has been amazing. At the first one, I had a friend from Rio de Janeiro and he was playing different rhythms from different favelas. Another guy that was there was French, was playing Mozambique love jams and like translating them to us. Mm -hmm. And then we, you know, we sort of were talking about records that were like house music before house music and playing Candido from 1971, you know? Um, so it's just like a lovely exchange of ideas. So also there was this void of any gigs to go to because of lockdowns and the music industry took a while to pick back up. There was a lot of uncertainty. So it was a space in which it was kind of like a gig, but it was kind of space to have conversations about music. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a kind of nothing really like it in a group setting. You might chat to your friend who's a music nerd about this new record you got, but having it formalized was just really nice. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it, initially to me, it was, it was almost kind of basically like a, a, uh, a book club for, for music heads, exactly, you, know? you know, and, and I think from the exchange of sharing each other's, um, I guess their insights and, and, in, um, about the music as well. Yeah. Uh, there's that, you know, there's a cultural exchange going on, here, yeah. especially now that you just mentioned, like people from different parts of the world bringing, yeah different parts of music yeah. from different parts of the world as yeah. well. Yeah. So, um, you know, I loved it. I, I had such a great time um, and it kind of, it, it, for me, my experience after like leaving there that night, it just brought this whole new appreciation again that I've, I, I, lo I felt, I, I totally I haven't felt, hadn't yeah, felt that you know? in such a long time. Yeah, awesome. So, yeah. So what, 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 what's coming up next? For, for the, have you got an, another listening party coming up uh, soon? Yeah, or? I'm heading off to on tour overseas shortly. So I'm going to try and fit one in in a couple of weeks' time. Um, probably only four or five people. Um, I just got to send out the invites and try and get one in before I go. And then I really want to do them regularly and sort of invite people in advance. But as I said, it's sort of um, lots of people are interested in it and it's just been lovely to get everyone together under that theme, you know, uh, and being, as you said, deliberate about loving and consuming and sharing music. And there are nights like this around the world, but a lot of them are audiophile focused on gear and sounds. And my night's not that like, you know, the system's nice, but it's all about the music, you mm -hmm. know. And, and, and obviously the, the, um, the conversation that comes with yeah. it too, you know, yeah. uh, I think that was what I loved about it um, was that that opportunity to be able to sort of like sh share what, you know, I mean, I came with a bunch of records that I just bought from Melbourne and I yeah. had, because I haven't got a setup at home at the moment, it was an opportunity to go through yeah, it and share it with yeah, everyone, yeah. you know? So yeah, I loved it. Um, I, I wanted to also, also chat to you about, um, you know, uh, finishing, um, finishing projects and yeah. finishing work and your, uh, your, uh, and, 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 and how you kind of bridge with, with sharing music at, in, in that process with yeah. finishing projects and, and using sharing at the same time as a way to kind of help with finishing projects. Yeah. Yeah. So tell, tell me a bit about that. I mean, if you're in a studio and you're writing a bunch of tracks, you know, you could write forever. You could change things forever. Um, and I found that, you know, especially DJing, if I go out and play the track to a dance floor, it suddenly has its own identity. Like it's done the thing, it's been out there. And I liken it to like when you're writing something, it's like wet paint or wet clay and you're sculpting something. And as soon as other people hear it and you have a reaction to it, it starts to dry. So you can do that by putting, I put Instagram stories up, I make little videos and just put up draft beats. And, you know, it just gives songs an identity for me rather than, you know, 160 songs sitting in your hard drive, which may be half finished. Um, and it really helps me personally when I could play it to a dance floor or share it to think, oh, I'm just going to tweak this and this, and then it's done. It's done, you know, move on to the next one. So I am a big advocate for sharing your stuff. Even if it's not completely finished, just um, it gives things an identity and a vibe of their own. Yeah, well, I, um, and, and you sort of, I mean, the, the whole um, uh, getting stuff done, and not not only just for your music projects, but it, it there's a you have a you have a process yeah. that you mentioned earlier when we were before uh, earlier today. You yeah. were saying that you have a bit of a like a your own kind of hack into the way you get stuff done. Yeah, and yeah. Tell me a bit it's about, about that. taking pressure off yourself, yeah. right? Because I find if I say for the next eight hours I'm going to write an amazing song, you know, 
And then you've got all this pressure and you're like, I need to do this. And then you get bogged down in the details. You end up mixing the bass line and the kick for two hours and tweaking things. So my hack, I work from home, you know, I'm a freelancer and my home studio is my home office. I have lots of meetings and I might have a 45 minute gap and before the next meeting. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to write a song in that 45 minutes. It doesn't have to be great. Just play some chords, program some drums, you know, chop up a sample, play a bass line, do an arrangement. And having a timeline, like I've only got 45 minutes, it doesn't have to be great. I just, I'm so ruthless and productive, you know, you're like, okay, that sounds pretty good onto the next bit, the next bit. And then you walk away at the end of the day and you've done like two skeletons of two songs that then you can dive into more deeply. And it's just taking that pressure off. And I wrote so much during lockdown. I think I had nine releases come out and wrote a whole lot more. There's more things coming out now, mainly because of this hack. And even when I'm going to meet friends for dinner or something, I've got 20 minutes. I'm like, I'm going to quickly write a song, you know? And like some of them are garbage, some of them you never use, but the pressure's not there. And it brought back the love of writing music to me, you know? Yeah. It, would you find, would you, would you say that, that um, this was something that you um, developed further because of this period of lockdown? Like it was something that you kind of we're able to kind of see it from a bird's eye view as a, yeah. a better a better way to kind of improve that process. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just just taking the pressure off yourself. And I think like most creatives, I feel this sort of burning uh, push in the back of the head to create things, you know. Mm. But and and it sort of scratches that itch, you know. I'm never I'm I'm happiest when I'm I've finished making something. Even you know that 45 minutes, like I just feel like um you know my creative thirst is quenched or whatever. You know, I just feel. Good. And it was a way to get that, you know, while I'm working in a, in my job to be able to mix in that creativity within that in a structured way. You yeah. Know? So. Yeah. It's like that, I, I guess the, 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 the whole thing of, uh, you know, what comes first, you know, the yeah. chicken or the egg or the horse yeah. in the cart, but like actually just making the effort or that, yeah. that step forward yeah. a- allows for more flow, yeah. and more things to sort of, um, uh, I guess, manifest and cr- yeah you know come come to fruition so that that in itself has um been a a part of your um would, would you say this is something that you've sort of developed over the years um that has been you know i i think so i was in a position for the last sort of seven or eight years i've wanted to be in a position where i was working for myself freelance so i could manage my time i'm also a single parent i've got a 10 year old daughter and I just wanted to have control of, of the time within my life for being a dad, working and creative stuff, you know? Yeah. And a couple, three years ago, I got the opportunity to do that. And I find that, you know, if you freelance, you can really do a lot of work in two hours, like a whole day's worth of work. And then you've got time to do other stuff. So I've been trying to be, again, that word deliberate about my time and putting myself into positions where my output, you know, um, you know my creative output, my work output, I, I, can, I can mix these things together. Um, rather than being in an office for nine hours and then getting home and being t- too tired to ever do music, you know. Well, if you if um if you get stuck on like on on finishing a certain project, yeah. what is uh, uh, what is something that you do to help, like just to, to help you get stuff done? Like, what is that? Like, I'd say sharing it. Um, you know, so sharing is the, the what yeah. you mentioned before, what we discussed. And I've got a friend, you know, my best mate Inkswell, um, who you're going to interview. At uh, some point, too, is you know he, me, and him have this great friendship. We've never lived in the same city. We've been best friends for a long time, and we share music every day. Everything I'm working on, I share it to him. He shares drafts back and forth. We help each other with our projects, and we have a real supportive base. Like, we'll if he sends me a song, um, he's not sending it for me to critique. I'm, you know, he's sending it to like get a vibe back from me in relation to that song. And I find it really useful having him and us sharing stuff back and so forth. So okay, accountability. Yeah. So accountability know. is the yeah. a big part of that. Yeah. And in in general, getting stuff done and getting things finished, what what do you do? Aside from yeah. sh- the sharing of music and accountability, yeah. what else would be a, a, another helpful tool or I'd, technique? I'd, I'd say, you know, you can get stuck on, you know, songs, I can, you can work on a song forever. So I generally, if I'm at a point where I'm a bit stuck where to go, I'll listen to it in another environment. I'll put it onto headphones and go for a walk in the sun, sit in a park, go yeah. to the gym, whatever. Nice. And then, you know, that sort of different environment um, helps. I also put it on in my studio and walk outside into my living room. So I'm hearing it from another room and just I'd be ruthless. I write, have a notepad and I do dot points of what I need to change. 
and I go in there and change those things, you know. And I've also found that getting up really early and doing music as uh, like, you know, getting up at 6 a.m. And because in the morning, you're very ruthless. You're not going to muck around with this little thing or tinker around with this chord progression. You're going to turn this into a song. And I find that sort of just after sunrise, that's when I work on half finished things and just be ruthless and, you know, do an arrangement and get them to where they need to be. That's not to say I don't have lots and lots of unfinished songs, but the ones that I really love and vibe on, um, yeah, there are a couple of the ways that I get them finished. Look, it, sound, it sounds like these, the, these kind of realizations or, or the, these hacks that you've discovered is something that it took over time to, reach, yeah, to absolutely. get. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I guess from, from um, in your early years of music producing, um, would, would you say that was a difficult thing to come to, to kind of figure this sort of stuff out? Yeah. Because I, 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 I'm, I'm interested to learn about um, from you, like those challenges. How did you, you know, I guess, I mean, with anything, I think it's over time and, and yeah. trial and error. But like what, yeah, how did you get through those challenging times back then that helped you make those leaps to figuring this stuff out? I think that when you first start out and you've got these million options in front of you, plugins, this, this, you know, um, you, I made things overly complex. Like if I go back now and go into the files of things I made 15 years ago, there's so much going on, you know? And then I think it's allowing, giving yourself the confidence that something can be simple and still be amazing, you know? Um, and, you know, in regards to, if you're making something for people to dance to, the push-pull of the rhythm, just imagine dancing to it, you know, and build it from there. So I think it's just a confidence thing in knowing, uh, making, you know, uh, you know, your fourth decision is the right decision rather than your 15th decision to continue a song's vibe. So I think it's, it's a slow process. It's got to do with confidence in your own sound and, you know, um, and your process. Mm, so, it's, so it's a bit of a personal journey, really. Yeah. Like it's le learning how to let go of certain things from... Yeah. Like, um, and figuring out from from um, those early days of because it, it's the complexities of the mind that wants you to kind of like yeah you know get everything right and get everything yeah. perfect and so I, I think over time you start to realize that um, to, to let go of those sort of things yeah. that kind of keep you kind of attached and stuck yeah so it's it's, it's this constant journey of right. sort of letting go of stuff yeah and and yeah so. Tell me a bit about that for you. Like, you know, over time, did it get easier or harder? I think I can get a vibe much sooner, you know, now. Yeah, I can sort yeah. of think of something and go, all right, you know, um, and, you know, using pockets of space and time and pulling things away. And, you know, there was a long period where I wasn't writing music, probably seven or eight years, you know, I had a young child. Um, and, you know, it's probably only in the last four or five years I've really started writing again in earnest. But yeah, I think it's just a confidence thing and also not being too precious. Like, you know, you, you know, that's why sharing is good because you might have a perception of a song, but I think, oh man, it might be a bit, it needs more. And then you play it to a dance floor and everyone goes nuts. You're like, nah, it's done. You know, mm. like it's ready. It just needs a mix and it's done. Yeah. So. Well, it's, it sounds like now you've, you've created all these kind of like um, uh, pillars or structure around you to, to facilitate the right environments yeah. um, that that help um, with your creative process, yeah. but also like remaining in some kind of flow state and getting rid of anxiety and yeah. getting rid of those those attachments and and it seems like it's um you know I think something that you've learned through I guess trial and error as I yeah. mentioned earlier it's it 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 took it took time so and taking pressure off seems to be a big part of that yeah tell me a bit about that taking pressure off i don't know like the whole idea of making a song from nothing and going here this is what i made you know if you're a music lover like me that likes so many different styles of music it's a lot of pressure like um and when you're first starting out you don't really have your sound you're sort of mimicking other things to a certain extent you know um and i think like anything in life as you get older you're more comfortable in your own skin right so um you have your own identity and I would much rather I love the stuff that I work on than put stuff out that I wasn't really proud of that did really well. I know other people are the opposite, but, you know, it's a real personal thing for me. And I'm, you know, when I write music, I'm never, you know, it's, it's, I forget to eat. I love it. You know, I love that feeling of walking away, having created something from nothing, you know. Um, so I think, yeah, you just get more efficient and you're more confident as you 
sort of, you know, you've done thousands of hours of this thing and you are, you know, your workflow and hitting that flow state and you don't make as many mistakes in regards to things like the mix. You know, you might make an amazing tune that has a great vibe, but the mix is all wrong because you're not experienced enough to, yeah. you know, uh, know how to make things sit in the pocket. Sure. You, you mentioned before about uh, just now about identity and like we um, being being in Australia, yeah. there's like so many, we've been so many different influences and a yeah. lot of it's American as well and yeah. UK and a lot of your sound kind of bridges these two worlds, yeah. especially from the UK and the States. Yeah. Um, how, yeah, you mentioned about like sort of finding your own kind of your own um, sound or yeah. That resonates with you, your own yeah. um, uh, identification. Yeah, tell me a bit about that. Like, how? Did, when did you kind of feel more comfortable in your skin, as you said it? I think it's just from practice, and like you know, I wouldn't mimic. The, I write a range of stuff. I write everything from hip hop to Bruck and Broken Beat to house, you know, um, and neo soul. And it's not necessarily. Um, I like you know doing my take on things, you know, and. Um, I don't really have an answer for your question of when it happened or the process to get there, but I, I can quickly identify when I'm starting to write a song, um, whether I, I feel it, you know, rather than thinking about what other people, what other people are going to think of it. I'm right. not really too worried about that anymore. Yeah, yeah. And it's, that comes from getting older. When you're younger, you're worried about what's, you know, like you think of this group of friends or this person that's going to hear it or this radio station. And you're like, oh, I need to tick all these boxes. And then as you get more confident, like, no, I just need to tick this box, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, and I guess it's more of an emotional state that you're trying yeah. to seek rather than yeah. those kind of, like, exactly. t- those t- checkpoints. Yeah. And and I guess that, like, I'm, I'm wondering how, like, if that's something that's just about experience or is it something that, like, someone can learn it, uh, and acquire from a young age as well, like being able to kind of, you know, how can we – how can we just jump all those steps yeah. to kind of figure out ourselves? Yeah. Because it, 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 it does sound like to get to that place is, yeah. is more of a personal sort of journey of yeah. like, under, like unraveling um, our own bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. It's totally personal. Yeah, and it is a personal journey, you know, mm. like of, of, you know, letting go of the things that we think are so important to us. Yeah. You know, validation like you said yeah. like from other circles of friends and yeah. and yeah i i i wonder what can be you know for for a young producer or a dj that's you know to to be able to kind of learn that process yeah. straight away you know how could someone do that like I, or is it you have to go through that process of of I mean, there were certain things when I was first starting. I made some really quirky stuff that I loved. I suppose it's asking yourself the question in isolation. Strip everything else back and go, do I vibe with this? Like, do I like this, you know? Yeah. Is this me? Does this represent, you know? Um, and don't think, oh, this person may not like it or this person or may not fit into this. Like, do you like it? And then, like, maybe, you know, and focus on that is the important thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean obviously when you're, you're making something, you are thinking about the – the audience and the people on the dance floor as well. Um, but, you, you know, you constantly kind of like, um, yeah, there's a fine line. I think there's a fine line. In that, that case, goes. I'm like, would I, if, if the DJ dropped this, would I dance yeah, to it, you know? Yeah, like, you, you, yeah, just yeah, put yeah, yourself yeah. in that position. If I, you know, ran a radio <laughs> show, would I play this, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Just- and, 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 you know, would I buy this record? Would yeah. I be, pick it up? And um, yeah. yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, so... Um, you, you about 10, I was, I would say about 10, 12 years ago was when you sort of opened up to, um, touring more yeah. around the world. Yeah. And, and that was quite a, a, um, you know, being able to, to start touring. Yeah. Opened you up to a lot of other kind of, un, uh, like dance floors and understanding yeah. how, like music around the world but you did find this common thread amongst yeah. the vibe of people yeah. around the world but um yeah tell me a bit about that journey like when 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 you started to open up to play around in different parts yeah of the, on, i suppose the about 12 or 13 years ago i picked up uh had some friends i released music on a record label in melbourne and i went down for a launch there um and i got a couple more gigs and it was sort of opened me up to like-minded people 
in Melbourne and I started a couple of residencies where I'd go down every six weeks. And it was just great being out of your own city where like, you know, you might, you know, I was playing a lot back then. Um, you might have certain palettes of sounds that you're playing and you want to keep it fresh. So you're sort of changing up what you're playing and then going to another city and, you know, um, all those things having the same effect on a dance floor and just look, talking about how universal music is. Then I started opening up to traveling and I would go to Detroit every year and play in New York and LA and Berlin and places like that. And the vibe on a dance floor when, you know, you know, when, it, when everyone suddenly just trusts the DJ because, you know, like the, the vibe fills the room. It's exactly the same everywhere around the world. And it keeps things from being stale. If you're just playing in one city, um, again, you're probably thinking about, you know, this person saw me play here last week. I've got to do something different. But when you go to new cities, just being able to share, you know, your vibe. So, and I love, you know, it was so blessed to be able to travel through music and there's like-minded souls, you know, in every city. If you tell some of my mates that I'm going to Chicago, they'll, you know, you get a group chat message with someone they know, you go out to dinner, you go to record shopping and it's just like this universal, you know, world of uh, music gigs. It's just, it's so nice. It's community, you know. Yeah, and uh, you've you've got some dates coming up soon, haven't you? You've, you're 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 touring soon. Yeah, again? off to New York in a couple of weeks with uh, Megatronic. Uh, I mean, her written sort of. I think this is, we're on our third release. We've got a group called Something Sometime. We're doing a, a couple of gigs in New York, then Detroit, then I'm heading over to London, Berlin, uh, Amsterdam. After that, so I'll be away for about a month. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, there's a new release that's out now on Feeder Soul Records. Yep. Yeah, tell me a bit about that project. Yeah, it's cool. So me and Meg Megatronic, uh, we only, we've only met once in person at a party here in Sydney, Soul of Sydney on New Year's Day, sort of two and a half years ago. And uh, we met through you. And, <laughs> and we vibed and we just stayed in, in touch through Instagram. And she heard some of my music. And then she had a release on turntables on the Hudson, Nicodemus's label. And I did one of the songs with her, sort of an Afro broken beat thing. And she liked that and said, let's do a whole EP together. So we released another three track on Turntables and the Hudson, and we've we've all we've got a pool of rec of songs we're always working on, and then we've signed with Feeder Soul uh, Records for a release that comes out on the twenty fourth of June. Um, it's nice, it's like bossa nova tune, you know, a couple of house tunes, a couple of sort of Afro Brock tunes, some sort of um, quirky sort of interludes. So I think it's an evolution of our sound, and it's it's interesting working with someone overseas. She's been in Dubai most of the time we've been working. So I'm really looking forward to actually, you know, seeing her in person for the yeah. second time. Yeah. You know? Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I get, I get, I mean, like all of us, we've been communicating uh, on like, yeah. like, like virtually yeah. online and uh, which is, I guess the way things are these days, but yeah. also um, because of the lack of travel, we haven't been able to see people in person. So, um, but there seems to be um, on the on the feed of salt, this this new release. Yeah, there are other people on on this uh, record. Like there are other collaborators in in. on Yeah, the most of our stuff will get percussionists in to do parts, or um, there's a spoken word part. There's a uh, some extra vocals here and there. So we're we're totally open to bringing extra people in um, to the project. And a lot of what we're working on after this release. Um, we're bringing in collaborators. So. Yeah. No, I I I t heard the EP the other day. Um, you thank the Peter Soul Boy send me yeah. uh, my my promo version. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I um, you know I I I loved it. I I found it I found it uh quite different from some but like the stuff that you guys have done yeah. before. And so uh, this new record uh is the 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 new project something sometime sometime yeah. yeah. Um, I had, I only, I only just learned about this new, uh, project. So what, what, what do you both have in the, in the pipeline for this? Like what's, what's happening for that? Yeah. So we wanted to make a, a like an artist name rather than it be, you know, Megatronic and Ed7, just to give it its own identity. Yep. And again, you know, with this release, as you heard, it's quite varied and it's nice to be able to step back because it isn't just me making this, it's me and Meg with collaborators. It's its own thing. So yep. it's real freedom to do different stuff that I may not do. Uh, under my own name, we've got, we're already working on the next release. We've got a couple of singles that will come up soon. Um, but yeah, me and her have a, a nice, a nice vibe and a nice process of sharing stuff. And, you know, it's just been lovely to co collaborate and have that like as a side project going on. So um, yeah, we'll probably have some, we want to sort of, we've had a bit of a about seven or eight months from the last release till now. So we want to try and every couple of meet, uh, months release a couple of singles and then do a, nice. a long player maybe. 
And and would it be a live a live thing eventually, or is that has that been a discussion? She yeah, we spoke. She sings over some of the tracks in her DJ sets, so. Um, I'm taking over as a keyboard and stuff so we can work on songs when we're in New York in a couple of weeks and we'll chat further about doing a live thing. Okay, cool. And would, would that be with, with musicians or is it more? Uh, or, uh, we'll, we'll see. It's just because we're on the other side of the world yeah. just working it out, you know. So. Of course. Okay, well, great. Well, where, where can um, the, the viewers and listeners uh, find out more about Ed7? Ah, a few places. I do a monthly radio show in Brighton in the UK on 1BTN. Yeah. It's myself, Steve Spacek, and Tom Study called Steppers. Nice. Um, I do a monthly Steppers night here in Newtown. And uh, yeah, I suppose they're the two main places. If you put links to my Instagram and SoundCloud and Mixcloud, people can check out stuff there. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Ed, thanks again for uh letting us into your space today and recording. And no uh, it's an absolute pleasure to chat with you a bit more about what's happening in your world. And with Meg's new project as well, which I'm super excited about for both of you. I'm yeah. looking forward to what uh, continues with this new, this uh, friendship and uh, music partnership. Yeah, me too. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Thank you, bro.